there's this illusion that the British invasion and occupation of India was performed by the British army on behalf of the government and the crown, but the truth is far more sinister, because India wasn't conquered by a country, instead it was conquered by an evil corporation. Now some of you may only know the East India Company as the bad guys from two of the Pirates of the Caribbean sequels, but on and off the screen they're very much the epitome of an evil organization. The company itself started relatively innocently enough when a group of merchants banded together in the late 16th, early 17th century to trade in Asia and to help Britain break the Dutch monopoly on the Asian space trade. The company charter that was granted by the Crown gave them the power to armies mint their own money, build forts and castles, acquire territory, and wage war if it is in the interest of Britain and the company. And so that's what they did. And over the next two and a half centuries, the EIC took territorial control in India, first in Bengal, and then eventually dominating and decimating the Mughal Empire. All by instigating wars, engineering famines, plural, and, of course, good old-fashioned pillaging. And in its heyday, it had a private army of 260,000 men. Now to put this into perspective, the U.S. Army had 12,000. And for over a century and a half, the East India Company was able to get the British government to look the other way by, you know, bribing them. Then they forgot to pay for a couple of years, followed by the 1857 uprising, giving the British government the perfect opportunity to take control of India from the company. And this was the start of the British Raj, where India came under direct control of the British Parliament. When British entered with East India Company in the name of trade, Britain's economy was only 2%, but it spiked when they colonized India for more than 200 years. India produced about 25% of global industrial output from the 16th century ad to mid-18th century. Under colonial rule, India went from selling its finished products and getting paid in valuable metals, to selling raw materials and buying finished products from other countries. During World War II, millions of people in the Bengal region died of famine, when Winston Churchill boosted the buffer stock of wheat for future storage and letting people die in India. When British left in 1947, India's share of the world's income went from 25% in 17th century to just 3% in 1950 if the British never had come to India. Today, India will be one of the richest countries in the world. The British built railways in India primarily for their benefit. And Indian taxpayers funded the construction through heavy taxes, most of the profits went to the British pocket. It is estimated that in 200 years, British looted a huge amount of $45 trillion from India. A fun fact is that they even took the Hindi language word loot and used it in their dictionary. All the wealth and empire that was built by British, not just in Britain, but in Australia, Canada and other colonized nations was made from the looted wealth from India. After all this, India is still fifth largest economy on the planet and rising.